In this video, we're going to learn how to determine how the velocity of a river or stream can impact the amount of sediments and the type of sediments that are transported by that river or stream. Just as a reminder from yesterday, water velocity is one of the factors that impacts how much erosion takes place. Remember that erosion is the transport of sediments. The faster the water goes, the more transport that can take place. This also has an impact on the size of the sediment that can be transported. Remember, sediments range in size from boulders to cobbles all the way down to small sediments such as silt and clay. A faster moving river or stream is going to be able to move those larger sediments. Here's a picture of people whitewater rafting just to show you an example that relates to human activity. As the river flows faster, the people in the raft can also flow faster. So your water velocity directly impacts your transport, which is erosion. On the other hand, water is not always going to travel fast. At times, it's going to slow down. As your water velocity decreases, the water can no longer transport all the sediments it's been carrying. If it's carrying all these different sized sediments that range from boulders all the way down to sand, silt, and clay, as that water slows down, the largest sediments are going to be dropped first. That's deposition. So as your water velocity decreases, the amount of deposition starts to increase. You start dropping more sediment, which leads to that horizontal sorting we learned about. So I just want to show you a little visual of this in real time. So at the top we have our blue squiggly line representing the surface of the water, we have our stream bottom, and then we have different colored sediments of different sizes. Over time, as the water is flowing and as it starts to decrease its velocity, the largest sediment drops first, the next largest drops then, then it keeps falling in order. That's called horizontal sorting. As your water velocity starts to slow down, you get deposition in size order. So now the basis for the lesson today is going to be on page six of the reference table. So I want you to go there. That's your first step. It's on the top right of page six of your reference table. The second step is I want you to get a highlighter. You're going to highlight the data line within the graph. Because remember, when you're dealing with any line graph, the line is where you get your information. So I want you to highlight that data line so you know that's where you're going to go to get your information once we do some example questions. The next thing I want you to notice that are the dashed horizontal lines in this graph are the separation of the different sediment types. So clay, silt, sand, pebbles, cobbles, and boulders are all separated by your dashed lines. Not the solid lines, the dashed lines is what separates them. So now I hope that you have access to colored pencils at home. If not, maybe try to use some crayons. If you don't have anything at all, it's not the end of the world. It's just a nice way to visualize this graph a little bit more. I want you to take any colored pencil. It doesn't have to be red like I did. And I want you to shade in the sediment section for clay. That's starting at the 0.004 centimeter dash line and lower. Then I want you to take another colored pencil and color in the section for silt. Remember, you're coloring in between the dashed lines, not the solid lines, the dashed lines. And ultimately, if you keep following these steps, you're going to have each sediment type color coded so that you can know exactly the sediment range that exists on this particular graph. So at this point, if you are coloring your diagram, which I highly encourage, you can pause this video so that you can make sure that you're coloring in between the dashed lines, and at the end of it, your graph looks something similar to mine. Remember, the colors don't have to match, I just want each sediment type to be a different color. Something else I want to point out to you that's a little bit interesting with this graph, the X and Y axis scales are not consistent. I have an example here to show you for the x-axis just so you can take a look that the line spacing is not consistent but also the scales are not the same. So I took the time to annotate for you guys so you can see what the lines and markings in between could be valued. So if you're ever confused when looking at this graph, 
please go back to this video and this slide in your notes so that you can make sure you understand how to count each line. Okay, so now I'm going to take the time to show you some example questions. These are also available in your notes, but sometimes with this graph it, it takes some uh, teacher explaining to really make sure you understand. So to start, the question is, a stream is traveling at a velocity of 100 centimeters per second. As the stream sl starts to slow down, we want to know which sediment is the first to deposit. So the first problem with these questions is sometimes there's just too much information in the question. So what I want to do is show you guys what we're actually trying to answer. What are we looking for as our final result? We're looking for a sediment type. That's going to be our final answer. Not a number, it's going to be a type of sediment. So with any question like this, I always like to start with what do we know? We know that the stream is traveling at 100 centimeters per second. So I'm going to locate that on the bottom of my graph. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that 100 centimeters per second and I'm going to go up to the data line in my graph that you highlighted earlier. Now at this point, we have to remember what are we trying to solve? We're trying to look for a sediment that's going to deposit. So I'm going to look over to my sediments as soon as I hit my data line and I'm going to see that at 100 centimeters per second, bringing it up to the data line, I end up with pebbles. What this is telling me is a stream traveling at 100 centimeters per second is strong enough to carry pebble sediments. But if the stream is strong enough to carry pebble sediment, it's also strong enough to carry the smaller ones, such as sand, silt, and clay. But the question is asking, as this stream starts to slow down, as it starts to go less than 100 centimeters per second, what's going to be the first sediment to deposit? And that's going to be the pebbles. The pebbles is the largest sediment in this case, and it's going to be the first one that gets deposited. Another example question, what is the largest particle diameter that can generally be transported by a stream moving at 100 centimeters per second? So we have that same stream velocity from the last example, but now we're looking for an entirely different type of answer. This question is looking for a particle diameter. So let's start by locating again what we know that the stream is traveling 100 centimeters per second. I take that up to my data line, and since I'm looking for particle diameter, I'm going to take this point and bring it over to the y-axis where it says particle diameter, and I'm going to see that traveling at 100 centimeters per second, the largest particle diameter that can be transported is 2.0 centimeters. Here's another type of question I can ask you about this chart. What is a possible size range for sand sediments? So what I want to point out to you guys is, remember, the dashed lines are representing the difference in sizes for your sediments. So to find the size range for sand sediments, I need to look at the dashed lines on either side of the sand section. And if we look closely, we'll see that the range for sand sediments is 0 0.006 to 0 0.2 centimeters. Just want to show you one more possible question that you can be asked. This question is which sediments can be transported by a stream traveling at 0.1 centimeters per second? So what are we looking for in this question? We're looking for sediments. So our answer should have nothing with numbers in it. It should be about the sediments. So what do we know? We know our stream is traveling at 0 0.1 centimeters per second. So I first locate that on my graph. Then I take that up to my data line. And since I'm interested in sediments, I'm going to look over. And I'm going to see that a stream traveling at 0 0.1 centimeters per second is able to carry silt and clay. In this particular question, I can have more than one answer because the question is not asking what's the largest sediment that can be carried. It's not asking which is going to drop first. This question is asking what can possibly be carried where the stream moving at this speed. And if you're strong enough to carry silt, you're also strong enough to carry clay. 
So this particular question has two answers, silt and clay. If you have any other questions while you're doing your activity today, I really recommend re-watching this video. I gave you four different example questions that you could possibly see, and all of your answers can be found by looking at this graph. Good luck.